gonna throw a hat on here so uh, the glare doesn't blind you guys. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jordan, this is Flying Dollar Motorsports, and today uh, I wanna talk about, first off, what is a Titan Swap? And second of all, uh, what is the most important element of the Titan Swap to me? Uh, there's a couple of videos out there you can watch, a lot of videos that are more in depth on what a Titan Swap is. Uh, so I'm not going to go crazy in depth with that, but uh, only one of them, uh, a YouTube uh, video producer by the name of Dagroot X, kind of touches on what I think is the most but he important part, but he doesn't really highlight it. He just kind of touches on it, and you'd have to, you know, pick out the benefit because he doesn't really specifically say it. So, what is a Titan Swap? So, the Nissan Xterra, the second generation Nissan Xterra from 2005 to 2015 and the Nissan Frontier of the same era, of course that continued well into 2020 I believe, were all built on the same platform as the Nissan Titan of the same era. I believe it's 2004 to 2015 model years. So many of the suspension uh, components swap right over. However, even though the mounting points are the same, the Titan stuff is a little bit bigger, obviously because it has the wider track width uh, for the truck, being a full size. So what a lot of people found out we could do, and what I have done to the material girl out there, is swap some of those suspension parts over and swap the differential and stuff like that over. Now there's a couple of ways to accomplish that, and the first, the main element of a Titan swap is your uh, front suspension. So you have to replace the upper and lower control arms and some type of uh, coilover or strut component to replace your original Nissan one. And the reason for that, the, what most people believe the benefit of, is, and it is a benefit, it's just not the most to me, is uh, it gets you a little bit wider track width. Obviously the uh, Nissan Titan stuff is wider and it gives you a little bit more suspension travel. And that being because the longer control arms reduce the angle of your CV axle. So if they were shorter, it kind of pushes them, you know, binds them up like this, you know, versus where they're longer, you can kind of get a little bit less of an extreme angle on your CVs like that. So that is a little bit easier on your CV axles and it's a little bit, uh, gives you a little more suspension travel. Now, starting with the upper control arms, you can replace the control arm with a stock Nissan Titan axle, or excuse me, Nissan Titan control arm. Uh, the, however, the problem with that is, is there tends to be binding at the uh, upper upper mounts and whatnot, not the control arm to the frame, but the coilover mount. Uh, and sometimes there is some uh, clearance issues. So there are a couple companies out there like PRG, Nistec, uh, SPC that offer a tubular upper control arm with better, better bushings and stuff like that. Most best recommendation is don't go with the stock stuff, but it is cheaper, not really your best performance. Now, the lower control arm is a completely different story. You can absolutely, and your cheapest way, without really losing any performance, is to go ahead and use a lower control arm from a Nissan Titan. That's what I use, been using it for years, it's just fine. Uh, you have to, as well, like I said, replace your front coilover or shock or strut, whichever you want to call it. I personally, my setup is using a two and a half inch remote reservoir uh, race tech coilover. That's what they had at the time. You know, there was, there's an option. A lot of people have like a two inch rad flow design that you can use in there. Uh, also works just as well. The race tech with the external reservoir might be a little uh, overkill. So you don't have to go with that. It's just what I happened to get at the time uh, what was available. Now, you do not have to, however, this is kind of where we get into my point of what I think is the most important. You don't have to replace your front differential with a Nissan Titan differential. The Nissan Xterra or the Frontier come with what's called an R180. Uh, it's perfectly fine for what it is. Uh, however, there are some key differences to the M205, which comes from the Titan. Like I said, they're all built on the same platform, so you can literally take the M205 out of the Titan and bolt it directly into a Nissan or Frontier uh, platform. And that's what I did. The reason why, the M205 is, has a stronger housing, especially if you get the three-ribbed design. I'll see if I can find a picture of that for you guys. 
Uh, those are a little bit uh, stronger than the earlier two rib design that came in the Titan. Uh, it has a larger ring gear, a little bit stronger, and this is where we get into where the separation of the two is. Now, there is a way to use your R180 with a Titan swap suspension-wise. There are some companies out there who make an extended length Nissan Xterra axle. Uh, this is not one, this is a stock one, but they make an extended length which basically extends this section here to make it longer to fit the wider track of the Titan components and still mount into the factory R180 uh, differential on this side, this being your outer, this being out where your hover spindle is. The problem that I see with that is those axles are still a Nissan Xterra based axle. Uh, the CVs are a touch smaller, but they work. The biggest thing is, well, number one, you have to buy those axles from those from specific companies like Nistec or Rugged Rocks, uh, guys who do a lot of specializing in Nissan aftermarket components. The Nissan aftermarket support realm, of course, if you have a Nissan, you know this, is not nearly as saturated with products as a Jeep or a Toyota. So it's harder to find. Those axles, you can't just go down to a junkyard and get them. You can't just go to O'Reilly and get a remanufactured one or uh, you know any auto parts store and grab one or Rock Auto or something like that because they're a spe specialty product. So they're, a little, they're not overly expensive, believe it or not, but they are going to be in limited supply, especially years down the road. And that's fine if you're building a mall crawler. If you just want to like slap some some racks on there and maybe your, you know, your ladder on the back and a set of 33s and look cool while you're going to see, uh, you know, the next Marvel Cinematic Universe movie uh, at the mall. That's great. That'll work just fine for you. However, if you wheel your stuff, and especially if you're trying to push to a 35 like I have on my truck, you're going to need something stronger. And here is why I say that. And what I believe is the most important advantage of the Titan swap. What I have here is both a Nissan Xterra or Frontier stock axle and a CV shaft, excuse me, and my broken, if you saw the video last, that I posted last week, uh, that's not supposed to be like that. It should be like this, nice and firm, not limp. Anyway, uh, this is the mounting side to, of the CV shaft to the M205 differential. This is the mounting side of the Nissan Xterra shaft to the R180. Notice that this is a flange style. Right here, it uses you know, six bolts, and it just pops onto the outside like that. The Xterra or the Frontier uses this C-clip retainer style spline male to female type connection to go into the R180. Now, the problem is, these are both CVs, so your weak point on this one is that CV. I've broken, this is the fourth one that I've broken. Uh, I'm running 35s. On a 33, you don't break them as much, but you get some binding, you get something like that, and they do tend to break. These can also break, don't get me wrong. However, I've broken one of these when I had an R180. Where did it break? It broke right in here somewhere. I think right here where you can see it has this tapered down. Obviously, this is going to be much stronger than this. Problem is, is then, this is very easy to remove. It just, you know, take the, you take your, drop your spindle from your upper control arm so you can get a little bit of work in there. You remove this right here and you just slide it out. The problem is this is still left inside because the C-clip retainer is kind of what holds it in there in place. So now you've got the open end of your differential uh, with fluid in there and it's not leaking out because this is going to be holding most of it in, but you could get dirt and grime and other stuff in there, especially if you have to get home through, uh, if you take it off on the trail and you have to get home through mud or anything like that or sand. But once I got it home, I was faced with how do I get this out? So my solution was I kind of drilled in from, drilled in from this direction, but from this side, obviously, uh, tapped it and put a really long bolt in there and used a slide hammer to pull it out. It worked, however, I had to be really, really careful and I had one of those long extendable little magnets in there to try to get all the metal that I was drilling out in there. I had it in there at the same time, so it was kind of cumbersome, it was awkward, um, and I don't think I did any damage to the uh, 
to the differential, but it's hard to tell because a few months later, I did end up blowing that differential completely um, in another incident, which forced the uh, Titan swap on me. I wanted to do it anyway. It just kind of made it a little quicker than I thought it would make it. Uh, but that's the real issue because do, imagine doing that on the trail. That's a pain to do. Uh, and you're kind of stuck out there and you know, you're left with two wheel drive or uh, if you're in my case, if you happen to end up having a locker in your front when you just have three wheel drive. Uh, but that's the main advantage because, or disadvantage, I'm sorry, that's the main disadvantage because this thing, I've gotten this thing down, like I said, I've broken it three or four times. I've gotten this thing down to a science. I can get this in and out in less than half an hour, uh, depending on the conditions that I'm in. Because you just unbolt that, it's the same process at this end, you know, you remove it and you pop it out and you pop it back on. Uh, I have a locker in the front of my differential in my front M205, so it's even stronger. And this is your weak point now. This is pretty much your weaker than your differential. So I would rather know that this is my weak point, drive uh, sensibly to try to preserve this. And if I break it, know that I can go and get one of these from man remanufactured or brand new for less than 150 bucks. I have one, I usually roll with a spare in the back uh, and I can replace it on the trail in 30 minutes and not have to, uh, you know, not have to ruin my day. So, Titan Swap. Great for off-roading, does increase your capability, um, but it's expensive and it's cheaper than a solid axle uh, conversion, but not as good as solid axle. I'll, I will openly admit that, but this is not why I did it. This is what I have learned over having my Titan swap since 2013, 14, I think I did it. Maybe a little earlier, 12. This is why I have learned, and this is why I've come to love, and this is what I will always tell you is your best bet uh, when you do a Titan swap, if you wheel it, if you wheel it. You just drive it to the mall, not a big deal. Thanks guys, have a good one, we'll talk to you later.